I I've always been interested in the uh, lure towards iconoclasm, and you know the the the, the big iconoclast movement which lasted for about a uh, hundred years in the Byzantine Empire, how it started, you know. Who knows? It may have even started simply because the emperor at the time, uh, Justinian II, slapped a, 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 an image of Christ on the back of the coins, and this meant that the uh, uh, caliph, um, I'm not sure uh, um, where he was, uh, the caliph uh, would not use the Byzantine coinage. It produced an economic crisis. Uh, equally, it may have been simply fueled by uh, the success of the um, Islamic armies and the Byzantine armies looked at them and said, well, surely they have the same God, but they have a principle of iconoclasm embedded in their religion and we don't, so maybe we're wrong. And the iconoclast uh, tradition continued for about a 100 years and was then overturned by St. John of Damascus and various monks uh, who had retained a veneration of the icons. And the, um, the celebration of the icons is uh, on the first Sunday of Orthodox Lent. Now, why am I talking about icons at this particular moment? Because the idea of iconography, uh, the idea of iconoclasm is sort of dominating the headlines at the moment, the idea that we can change a book, the idea that we can burn a book, uh, the idea that we can pulp a book, that's what um, President Putin's been doing. Um, but the idea that we can change a book, the idea that we can modify a work of art, uh, even the original authors, once a work of art is out there, surely it's the property of the world, it's in, in a way, arguably, it's no longer the property of the person who produced it. And arguably, they don't have a right to destroy their own work. And Banksy, when he destroyed, what was it now, the, um, uh, the, the, the work which was sold in Sotheby's for a million pounds, and the moment it had been sold, uh, there was this little shredder machine inside the frame, which started shredding the picture of the girl with the balloon. Girl with the balloon, that's it. And, uh, and and it self-destroyed, uh, but only half of it did. So you've got these, the, these shreds of paper hanging underneath the frame. Of course, it made the actual work of art significantly more valuable, and then Banksy produced another self-shredding uh, work of art. But Banksy isn't alone. Banksy did it possibly for a political or an artistic uh, expression in its own right. Uh, but there are many artists who tried to who 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 tried to destroy their own work uh, literally uh before their death or 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 left instructions that all their work was to be burnt um Aubrey Beardsley of course famously left instructions that all his work to be was to be destroyed um Nabokov Rossetti Monet uh Gerard Manley Hopkins that sort of saint of um, poetry sprung rhythm, and 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 Kafka, you know, where would we be today without um, without access to the trial, and um, metamorphosis, which I seem to constantly be teaching, but uh, you know, Star Wars, Star Wars has also been crippled with. Um, uh, self-inflicted iconoclasm. I remember the original Star Wars, the original trilogy, and that is now no longer possible to get hold of because um, Lucas improved it, improved it. Actually, he made it all rather um, plastic and saccharine and dull and, uh, in, my, in my opinion, unwatchable. Uh, and the original is simply in, impossible to find or only available on a cheap... VHS tape. Uh, and then we've got the controversy which is ongoing at the moment about Roald Dahl, the solution for the Dahl estate. Dahl, Dahl, Dahl gets into a problem because I think the Dahl family sold his estate to Netflix. And that's always going to come at a problem. Think of Tolkien. And, uh, and, and of course with Tolkien, should Tolkien have ever allowed his son and 
uh, and, and, and his estate to, 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 to market those um, scribbles, the, 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 the unfinished tales and so on, which have produced the most tawdry and dull television uh, spin-offs. Uh, again, unwatchable. And they diminished the original. Philip Pullman should have stopped writing after his dark materials because the stuff he's written since, I bought it religiously and I tried wading through it, is unreadable mush. And then we get to Ian Fleming. So the, 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 the Dahl estate has decided to, that it's going to publish the, um, uh, the, the, the collector's edition or something, the original the original works. Well, they won't be original unless they go back to the original illustrators. Um, and, uh, and, and we've already had so many revisions uh, because the Oompa Loompas were improved by Dahl himself to get rid of uh, the more racist um, overtones that uh, the Oompa Loompas carried. And uh, Ian Fleming, Ian Fleming did his own revision for the American um, publication. So he was already revising and censoring and editing what he'd already written. Uh, but the, the, the new editions, the new attempt to edit... I, assume, I, I, I think we already edit. These, these um, books are so famous and so significant that, um, that they that they are um, that they are filmed, that they are turned into different media. And when we turn these books into different media, we have an opportunity to edit and to impose um, our own sensibilities onto texts which are dated and which contain dated and often um, prejudicial uh, language and ideas, and um, that's the time to improve them. So, comic strip versions of James Bond, comics, um, uh, film versions of James Bond, um, stage adaptations of um, Roald Dahl. These are the opportunities to revise these significant works, not the original. Not the original. And uh, I'm, I'm sure in time there will be a huge, a huge outcry for the original version of um, George Lucas's Star Wars. I cannot be the only person who objects intensely to the, to the reworked versions. And, and, and I just long to see a human version of Jabba the Hutt in the first Star Wars film. And I still call it the first Star Wars film. I, I'm completely confused by the uh, by the nomenclature of Star Wars, so confused that actually I've lost interest. And that is the problem. That is the problem. So much revision goes on that in the end you just think, I cannot be bothered. Uh, the same thing with Philip Pullman, his obsession with, this is not a sequel, this is, and it's not a prequel. Well, what is it? What is it? It, it is a sequel, it is a prequel, it, I, and, and it's just mush. Just mush. And he needs to stop using the Oxford comma. Oh. Mm. There we are.